This is the definitive tier list of the absolute best stratagems in Helldivers 2. Obviously, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, disclaimer at the top of this video, use whatever the hell you like. That's the point of the game. But what I'm going to do in this video is break down the stratagems that actually get you sort of like the most value. And like as you go through the harder difficulties, so seven and above, the ones that generally you kind of want to take and that are pretty good. So what we're going to do is rank them from S tier being the best a being, well, we'll change this actually on the fly. So A is a really good and a B is decent. <laughs> C is not too bad. <laughs> and D, crap. <laughs> so, uh, and viable on the right mission. I'll keep this in the bottom because some are viable on the right mission. But honestly, you can probably put quite a few into this. Anyway, let's begin. So we'll go through this in order. So this is the MG43. Now, actually, I think this is a pretty decent stratagem. Um, it's You've got to remember, this has got medium armor penetration. So it's essentially the heavy machine gun you've got at the moment on the stratagem. There is a heavy machine gun coming. I guess this is a medium machine gun. I don't know. But it's a machine gun with medium armor penetration. This makes it really good against things like uh, hive guards or anything with armor. The thing is, though, it doesn't have much ammo. And I think this is generally one of the first stratagems you unlock when you start playing the game. But I wouldn't sniff on this, to be honest, or, or, or sniff about it, whatever the phrase is. Because actually, it's uh, it can be quite good. Like, I use this quite a bit on the silo defense missions where the hordes of Terminids were just rushing into the, the silo. You could hose them down with it. It was pretty decent for that. So, yeah, I, I actually think this MG43 is honestly a pretty good um stratagem no, so next up we're going to take a look at this thing so this is the anti-material rifle this is an absolute monster i'm I, i'm tempted to put this in s tier do you know what i'm just ooh, this is controversial you know screw it i'm going to put this in s tier this is incredible this is actually incredible so what you can do with this which i don't think many people are actually aware of is it it, it will just straight up one shot or two tap hulks if you shoot them in the face in the face plate if you're shooting enemies in their weak spots with this thing it does massive massive amounts of damage it's really really good obviously you need um to have decent aim with this and you can take um armor which will reduce the aim um sway of the weapon as well i believe that's the servo assisted thing might do that don't quote me on that actually but this is pretty good if you've got the aim right if you can hit targets in their weak spots it's great it's got good armor penetration as well I think this is probably better against automatons than um, Terminid. But, I, I I mean, I would still be okay rolling it against Terminid because mm, I, uh, the thing with Terminids is you kind of want the, the ability to hose down a lot of enemies. But I guess your primary weapon could do that. You know, if you take a shotgun, you've got that get out of jail card there so you can host stuff down at close range but honestly i would not sleep on this this anti-material rifle I, I don't want to use the phrase meta but i think this could be one of those meta weapons um that's just it's just really effective if you can land the shot i think next up we take a look at this this is the stalwart now the stalwart is it's again i think this is decent to be honest i, I prefer this over the mg43 just because it's got more it's it's faster to reload and it's better at sort of dealing with hordes of enemies really fast. Again, I think this is better against uh, Terminids than it is against bots. It can work against bots, but um, I generally don't take the machine guns against the bots. I think they're just better off against the Terminids. And I think they just feel better against the Terminids as well. But again, I think this is a decent stratagem, to be honest. I wouldn't... Like, taking that as your support weapon, I think, is okay. Provided somebody else is taking enough heavy firepower to take out larger targets whether that's through the eat rockets or a recoilless rifle so talking of eat this is literally an s tier um it's stratagem by a, a mile you guys have probably seen a lot of footage i've been playing uh well putting in the back of videos and i'm using this and the reason why it is just insanely reliable damage you know two shots of this into a bio titan's head and they're dead and guess what you get two of these you know, you hit most of the other heavy heavy enemies with one of these in their weak spots and they die. It takes out charges with one shot. It's on a 60 second cooldown. But here's the rub. If you've got the modifiers on missions, which you will get from difficulty seven above, you, you'll get more of them, I guess. The ones that increase stratagem cooldown can seriously annihilate this weapon's effectiveness. To the point of, in some cases, it might be worth taking the recoilless rifle over this just so you've got that reliability of having 
five rockets ready to go. Whereas this, you know, every minute you're dropping it down. But if that's increased by 100%, then that's every two minutes. And if there's even more of an increase or you've got stratagem blocking stuff going on, so an ion storm, or you've got like a bot outpost that's blocking it. Yeah, it can be bad. But I still think this is S tier though. I literally take this all the time. I think it's such a great weapon. It's so powerful. But yeah, there are some downsides to it. But I think the, it, the, the pros massively, massively outweigh that. So on that topic, we've got the recoilless rifle. This thing's really good. Now, I will always take EAT over this unless there is, you know, maybe if I'm against bots, I might think, okay, am I going to take the recoilless just because I know the bots might block my stratagems um, and maybe it's a little bit more reliable in that way. But again, yeah. Also, if you're playing with a team, uh, so I mean like with a friend or somebody in Discord or voice chat, and they're willing to do the assisted reload, this is goated. This is absolutely goated. But the problem is you're playing in pickup groups, which I generally do. It's going to be very, very hard to find somebody who wants to do that because generally they want to do their own thing because you still need to wear the backpack uh, to do the assisted reload. So the player doing the assisted reload needs to wear the backpack. Next up is the flamethrower. <laughs> now, I want this to be... It's crap. It's just actually crap. I really want this to be good. Now, the problem with this is it is, it is really good. Like, it can kill chargers super fast. It obviously, just use this against Terminids. Don't use it against bots i mean you're crazy if you take this against the bots using it against terminids though is great because the terminids generally all of them want to get close to you unless it's like a bile spew or a bile titan and melee you to death so you can flame them down but here's the the, the problem with it, it uh, sometimes when you turn it sort of flicks the flame i, I don't even know how to explain this uh, it's sometimes it'll get caught on terrain as well it feels like and this generally means you set yourself on fire uh, you'll also set your team on fire with this and it's a bit of a yeah it's, it's not as effective but like i said at the top of the video if you just want to go and burn stuff take the flamethrower because it looks amazing when you're burning stuff down but I, yeah it's just it's crap <laughs> it's crap <laughs> okay this is the, all right this is my favorite weapon in the game this is the auto cannon the ac uh what is it the ac30 i believe no ac8 ac30 so we're completely different ac8 auto cannon that's what it is and this bad boy, I mean, I can't put it in S tier just because I think it doesn't have that reliability of like the of these two weapons really. But I think it's really good, and I, I just think the overall design of this is incredible. The way the backpack interacts with the weapon, the way the weapon functions, the way you can have deflected shots, the way it's really good against a lot of enemies if you just you know use your your brain a little bit. So against the charger is always the good example. You can fire this into the ground under the charger, and it will explode couple of those shots and it will blow the back end out of the charger and that will result in the charger eventually bleeding out and dying which is really really strong um but obviously firing straight into its armor it won't do anything you can fire this into weak spots on tanks and it will blow them up it's really great for taking out objectives that are super far away so like illegal broadcast towers <laughs> piccolo piccolo say what you gotta say or whatever the meme is <laughs> 30 on 30 um, I'm not a big fan of the government. I, I'm, lo I'm literally losing my mind. But yeah, this, this is really good for that. Also, the E rockets are good for that as well and the recallers. But yeah, I really like the auto cannon. I think it's really, really good. It, it's it's great at just taking out hordes of uh, like lightly, arm lightly armored enemies, hordes of medium armored enemies. And if you're shooting heavy enemies in their weak spots, it can still be quite effective. So yeah, and it just it just feels great. Okay, railgun is up next. So the railgun. Now, obviously, this was S tier when it was just penetrating armor for fun. Um, it still can do that, to be honest, but I don't think it's as good as the anti-material rifle, but I still think it's really good. I mean, you're still going to get value from this. Again, just prioritizing shooting weak spots uh, of enemies, um, and you'll, you'll get quite a lot of value from this. But again, it's a bit of a boring weapon, the railgun is, uh, compared to all these other weapons. So for me, I just think it's really good. I maybe even put it down to decent. You know what? Screw it. Let's put it into decent. I think it's decent. I think all these weapons are better, so I don't think it can go into that tier. <laughs> That's my reasoning. Okay, so next up, we've got the spear. The spear, uh, this is like, it, when it works, this is really good. But generally, it's just decent. Now, when I say when it works, it's because what this can do is actually blow you up or just completely miss the target. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be firing this at close range. It's very dangerous. Um, sometimes it just won't even hit the right target. But when it does, it's really good. It's, I, I'm just going to say it's decent. That might be controversial, though, because people out there might think, you know what? It's actually really good. But what I'm thinking is, from the perspective of the Eat Rocket, they're just way better. These expendable anti-tank are just much more reliable than this. Um, that's why I'm going for that. So, yeah. Although this is maybe more reliable at killing tanks at range. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just think I just don't think it's as good as those. That's my reasoning anyway. 
Okay, let's move on to the... Uh, let's do the orbitals first. So, first one up is the Gatling Barrage. Now, this is okay, right? But I don't think it's great. I mean, I basically, I'm going to put this into the crap tier because the... Um, Strafing, the Eagle strafing run is better than this. And if you've got the Eagle upgrades in your hangar, so it's to upgraded to the maximum, you get more of these, so you can keep calling them down faster. So I, I just think, yeah, Gatling Barrage, not a massive fan of it. Oh, so I'm going to say it's crap. I, I think there are better options than that. Okay, moving on, we have now got the Orbital Airburst Strike. And I think this, again, is probably going to go into the crap tier. It's okay, but there are just better options than this. So this is really good at taking out groups of lightly armored enemies, but that's kind of about it anything with heavy armor it's not really going to do too much to which is unfortunate because that's just the way the ability is and like i said i just think there are better things than than that at doing what that does which you know i think says it all okay so moving on we've got this now these are where things get spicy so the orbital uh, this is 120 millimeter barrage <laughs> now um I, i'm you know i'm just going to put that here and i'm going to put the 380 mil in there as well just because they kill me more than they kill the enemy. But these are really, really good, actually. I don't know. No, you know what? No, I've got to put them in there. They're not bad. They're good for clearing out big areas, like clearing out a nest or an automaton base or whatever. They're really good for that. Like They can absolutely like plaster an area with firepower. Uh, but generally, you'll kill your own team with them. And I am still a bit more of a fan of more concentrated targeted fire because i think you just get more value from that so I these are okay yeah they're, they're okay so next is orbital walking barrage and this again is like uh, oh, i i think i'm gonna have to say this is crap because i think these two are just straight up better than this yeah i mean so all this does is it moves forward as it's firing like you know like it's rolling forward um, kind of like a world war one style artillery barrage that sort of tracks the troops as they're running over no man's land and it's just in front of them so when they hit the trenches it's like all timed perfectly but of course it never worked and half your soldiers got blown to bits which is basically what happens in this game <laughs> okay now talking of uh, the good stuff we're getting to the good orbital so orbital laser is great i really really like this so i might actually say this is really good you know so this is fantastic because what it does is it kills everything it takes a longer time to kill bio titans hawks and heavily armored targets but it will kill buildings and it will destroy bug nests and it will just laser down an area but what makes this great is it very rarely gets a load of team kills and it will just go to almost the highest threat target over and over again and hose them down and it lasts for a long time this is a fantastic strategy this is incredible like actually incredible i mean if you don't if you're not using this or maybe you're looking at stratagems to unlock unlock this because it's great it's really really great it's super effective and going on with that trend is the orbital rail cannon. Now, this is this will get you out of a lot of bad situations. So this will one-shot bio titans, it'll one-shot charges, it'll one-shot tanks, it one-shots anything in the game 90% of the time. <laughs> it looks really cool as well. The sound effects are fantastic on it, but it will get you out of that bad situation where maybe you just need that pinpoint strike to take out that big target that might be chasing you. So it, it is really, really strong. Again, there's an argument to be made that some of the eagle. Uh, stratagems maybe are a little bit better but again they can be a bit random where they land things like the 500 kilogram bomb and stuff but yeah i do i really think this is a very very good stratagem i mean it might, I'm, I'm not going to say it's s tier but i think it's really really good there is actually maybe an argument for the laser being s tier because that is just fantastic but i'm going to keep it there for now so gatling uh not gatling strike what's this strafing run this is um i think this is just better than the gatling barrage that's why it's got to go so there's gatling barrage it's got to go above that. While the Gatling Barrage just comes down and plasters an area, Strafing Run flies in and it's got more of like a, I don't know, like more of a horizontal area that it affects, but it comes in really fast, this does. The cooldown is basically nothing for it. So when you drop it, it's immediately there. So it will get you out of those situations where you need to kill a lot of like lightly armored enemies if there's a horde chasing you. So really good. And, and sometimes I do use this. I think this is really, really good. And, and I'm... You know, going on from that, this is the, the basically the eagle stratagem you just get at the start of the game. So everybody's got access to this. It's eagle airstrike. And this, I'm going to be honest, guys, is really, really good because it can kill anything. Yeah, it's not going to one-shot heavily armored enemies, but you drop two of them on or you get, you know, one really good strike. It can really soften up those enemies and you can kill them with follow-up damage. It's just great. It blows up buildings. It blows up bug holes. It can blow up, like, you know, like I said, well, like buildings. Radar towers, um, jamming towers, 
uh, illegal broadcasts, all of that. It's great. And it comes in pretty quick as well. It's really, really good. And I'm going to say this because I think it actually is. It's quite accurate as well. Very rarely does this totally miss the target and then you just end up getting blown away. Really, really good stratagem. So following on from that as well is Cluster Bomb. Now, I do like Cluster Bomb, um, but I'm just simply going to put that down into the not bad tier just because I think... Um, I don't, it's nowhere near the level of the, the standard airstrike. And also, I think Napalm is better than Cluster Bomb. And I might get slayed for this, but whatever, it's my tier list. But I think Napalm has got to go here. So Napalm is great. This is like area denial. You drop the Napalm, and it's just great. You dro drop in this into, like, um, big bug nests. I absolutely love this. Like, literally yeeting it into the middle of the massive hives. When they come running out of the holes, the place is all on fire, of course. This will kill your teammates as well if they're running through it. But it will set them on fire and it will kill them super fast. This is great. Great, great, great. You could argue maybe it's more of a mission-specific one. But I just think it's better than putting it down into the viable for the right mission um, stratagem tier. Because this is like, hey, I'm a big fan of this. I really am a big fan of this. But I wouldn't use it against bots as much. I, I mean, I basically would keep this for terminates because it just feels better against the terminates. Okay, so the jet pack or the jump pack. I, I love this. Um, I, I wish this was better than it was. <laughs> so, it, uh, it, it is good. Okay, okay, I need to rephrase that. This is good, but if you're taking this in place of, let's say, uh, you know, maybe your recoilless rifle or even like the, the anti-tank, the expandable, expendable, I should say. I always call it expandable, don't I? The expendable anti-tank, the EAT anti-tank. Um... Why am I saying this, right? So basically, this thing, you can jump over charges with it, right? I'm in a bad spot. With the charges coming from me, I can jump up in the air. Now I'm behind the charger and shoot him in the weak spot. Problem is, if you've got this, you can just one-shot the charger anyway. So what's the point of this? This, though, is good for getting you out of, like, really bad situations and keeping you alive. The problem is, the shield backpack, for me, is better at doing that job. So again, this is like... You know, I'm just going to say this is viable on the right mission. But the right mission is whatever mission you want it to be for the jetpack because <laughs> it's just cool uh, also with this it burns your cloak or your cape which i think is a super like, like literally a super cool detail okay so talking about crap we're going to talk about the smoke strike now uh eagle smoke bomb or smoke strike is like uh it might be a misunderstood stratagem at the moment this is going to be good against automatons not that great against bugs it can still be okay against bugs because if you drop it on them they don't know where you are and you can run away or you can get on with the objective. But against automatons, obviously, with their ranged attack, um, you know, it's going to obscure that. I, I think this might be slightly underrated on, um, you know, the missions where you have to rescue the uh, the civilians. It might be quite good for that, because if you drop it down, you can maybe close off areas of the base. The problem is, the way the AI works on those maps is they generally, or those objectives, is they generally rush towards the objective, so they'll just run through the smoke. So I think this is kind of like, I would never run this, basically. I think there's just so much more you can do um, with just killing the enemy rather than trying to obscure them and hide from them. Okay, next up, we've got Rocket Barrage. Now, this is, or oh, the Rocket Pods. What's this? 110 millimeter Rocket Pods, I think it is. I'll get destroyed in the comments below if I'm forgetting the names of these things. But it's quite hard trying to remember what they are. But yeah, so this is Rocket Pods. Um... So this is quite good at taking out heavily armored enemies. Like you can use this on chargers and it will come in and hit them. What it does is it aims at the highest threat target in the area. So as it comes down, it blasts them. Actually, Joel gave us all access to this for a while. Uh, and it's quite good against Bile Titans as well. Um, it's okay, but the problem for me is I would take Eagle Airstrike over this. Because I'd rather have the Airstrike come in with its bigger AoE. And then, you know, go for the follow-up damage to take out the heavier targets. But don't sleep on this. I think it's pretty good. Um, so I won't worry about that. If you're, if you're going to take it. It also looks quite good as well, as well, the way it comes in. Okay, now we're getting on to the big boys. <laughs> the 500 kilogram bomb. This is, like, really good. However, <laughs> however, it is... Uh, I don't know how to defend this, so I love using this, right? This has got to be one of my most used stratagems just because of the visual effect of it. So it makes me want to put it here into really good. If it lands, it's really good. B but it generally sort of doesn't land. However, the area of effect of this is so massive, it will generally kill what you wanted to kill with it. However, if it's not landing directly on a Bile Titan or a Charger or anything that's heavily armoured, like a Hulk or a tank, it will not kill them and they will still be alive and you've still got that problem of that dangerous unit alive. So while I want to give it really good, I might be controversial here and go, actually, 
I'm just going to give it decent. Because if I was looking at my stratagem loadouts, I'd be thinking, you know what? I'd rather take Eagle Airstrike and Rail Cannon instead of the bomb. Like, the bo what am I using the bomb for? I'm using the bomb to blow up a big area. Oh, well, I can use my bombs here, my Eagle Airstrike, to blow up the chaff. You know, like the, the, the lightly armored enemies and the medium enemies and the rail cannon for a big dangerous enemy if I really need it. Or the laser cannon, you know. So, I don't know. But you could put this in either two. It's not S tier. It's not S tier because it's too inaccurate. But it just looks amazing when it goes off. I, I'm going to leave it in the decent tier, you know. <laughs> Even though I use it all the time. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a hypocrite here, but I, I think decent because I think on paper these are better. Anyway, let's move on. So, <laughs> Orbital Barrage. Now, this thing is... Um, it, well, no, what is it? It's not barrage, is it? This, oh god, what's this? A precision strike? I think it is, right? Yeah, orbital, yeah, because that's these are barrages. This is a orbital precision strike, ladies and gentlemen. This again is one of the stratagems you get, like basically at the start of the game, as soon as you, uh, like, every hell diver's got this. It's not bad, but what I'll say about this is when it hits a target, it does a ton of damage and will kill them. Now, there are things in the game where you can stun enemies. I'm going to leave this in the not bad tier. So if you use the stun grenade, which is in the current war bond, the new war bond, the cutting edge one, um, and then hit them with precision strike. Oh, my God. It's really good. Like you can throw a little nade in, stun a charger, drop that on him. He's dead. Maybe that's overkill in this day and age, especially when you've got the eat rockets if you're rolling them. But honestly, this is a, a decent stratagem. And I think it's... Mm, I can't call it decent and put it in not... Too, no, you know what? I think this is decent. I'm going to say this is decent. Because I think this might be better. Well, I know it's, this is better than rocket pods, I think. <gasps> Again, that might be controversial. Because you could probably swap these two around. But I think it's okay, though. If someone's rolling this, I'm, I'm fine, right? Because it's generally not going to kill a lot of your own team either. And it comes down basically where you put it. Like, there is no, there's no miss. It's straight down on that target. Really, really good. Okay. Um, the gas... Oh, okay, gas is viable on the right mission. This might be an understood... Uh, a misunderstood stratagem. I think... So this is really good for killing eggs, according to the developers. I've not used it to kill eggs, because simply I don't think it's worth taking a stratagem just to kill eggs on the destroy hatcheries missions. It doesn't seem worth it. Um, it is obviously good area denial, but I just don't think it's that great. I think there's just too many other better options, but I guess on the right mission, this could be viable if you just lob it into the nest and then move on to the next one. It kills all the eggs, and then that, you know, means you don't have to go in there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think we'll just keep it at that viable on the right mission. Uh, and I think maybe going on from that as well is the EMP strike. Uh, I, well, it's not called an EMP strike, but it's basically what it is. Um, you know what? Let me Google what this is called, because I don't think... It's not called an EMP strike, is it? What's this called? I always get this. I can never remember what this one is called. Uh, EMS. EMS. There you go. So this is an orbital... No, this. Uh, where's it gone? EMS strike. Uh, this just stuns all the targets in the area. It, it's like a massive stun grenade, basically. This used in conjunction with other stuff. So, I mean, if you were, like, rocking 500-kilogram bomb and you hit them with this first and then hope the 500-kilogram bomb lands on them, maybe it's a good combo. But I just don't think it's worth using two stratagems together like that in a lot of cases. So this, I think, is just viable on the right mission um, because it stops enemies moving. And, and don't be under no illusions here. It really does stop them moving for a long time. And it works on both bugs and uh, bots as well. So... Yeah, it, I, I'm going to leave it there, viable. I think it's it's not crap. That's what I'm getting at here. It, it does have a use, but I think personally for me, yeah. So next up is Orbital. Um, again, this has got to go there. So this is just an Orbital smoke screen. Maybe we're sleeping on this though. Maybe like if you had this double sort of smoke build, you could really smoke out areas and it'll screw with the enemy's AI and you can do missions quicker, faster or something like that. I don't know. But honestly, I just think these are crap. I'm not a big fan of them uh, at all. Right then, uh, I, I've got to call this crap as well. This is the machine gun turret that you can drop and then you can use it. It's just crap. You, you're too far out in the open. Um, you'll just get swamped by enemies. It's not. It doesn't do enough damage to take out heavily armored enemies, uh, like pierce their armor. It's just not very good. Like I, Honestly, it's crap. I, in fact, I think I've only ever seen somebody use this once. I've used it a few times myself, thinking it's like some great option on a defensive mission or the extraction missions, but it's not. It's crap. I, I just, yeah... There's a lot better options than that. But again, if you want to use it, just go ahead and use it. <laughs> right then, this is where things are going to get spicy beyond belief. Because these are the mines. And uh, I like... Okay, let's just go for this. So this is the shield generator relay. This one, I think, is misunderstood. Um, I'm going to say it's viable on the right mission. So what this does is projects a dome all around you. Which will just intercept all damage. This is really, really good. 
and on higher difficulties. So if you're getting like, if you're playing a hell dive because you're crazy, this can be a really goated stratagem because it can save you when you're about to get killed. Like on extraction, it can save you. Like it's goated for that. Um, but on other difficulties, I think it's overkill because you're better off killing the enemy rather than trying to just last so you can get extracted, if that makes any sense. So I, I'm going to say it's just viable on the right mission, but definitely at harder difficulties, this you'll see a lot more of this. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's definitely, well, it's definitely not crap. It's pretty good. Okay, we're going to move on to, um, this is the uh, Tesla Tower. Now, this is, again, viable on the right mission. So obviously with the silo missions, this was fantastic. This was actually fantastic because you could put this down on one of the chokes and when the enemies rush through, because the way the AI was functioning is the AI would, as soon as you activate the silo, they would they just ignored all turrets and they ignored hell divers and they rushed for the silo to try and do as much damage to it as possible to take it out. This is great because it means they ignore the Tesla tower. They walk straight past it and it just zaps them and kills them. Obviously, this will kill your team as well unless they've got the new... Um, cutting edge armor on with the 95 percent damage resistance to arc so yeah but i think this is very specific to certain missions like you're not going to get much value out of this on like most of the mission types but you are on missions where you're in a stationary position for a long time and maybe you have to hold areas where there are very clear chokes where the enemy will come through it, it can be really good for that and and, and to be honest this has got to go in there. So the minefield is just like, yeah, anti-personnel mines. Again, it's viable only in certain game modes. But this is more frustrating than the Tesla Tower, I'd say. Just because this will kill more of your team. Because players won't see it. When things get crazy, they won't see it. But you know what's really cool about this? The way it deploys is sick. The way it, it, the, the pod hits the ground, it comes up and it spins around and just fires them everywhere. It looks really good. So, yeah, this is very specific. I will say one thing about this, though. When there was the um, personal order to get kills with the mines, um, it was a really good tactic throwing it down onto bug breaches because it would just wipe out the bugs as they were breaching. It was really, really good for that. So I guess you could say in some ways it's more of like a targeted cluster bomb in that kind of way. Uh, it's pretty good. Honestly, pretty good. Okay, let's move on to um, the backpacks. Now, this is the uh, B1 supply backpack. It's crap. <laughs> this might be harsh, but it, I don't think it is. So, you, you you will never need this. This is the problem. I don't think there's ever a situation where you're going to run out of that much ammo and not find it on the map. I think before players realize that there's a lot of ammo at points of interest all over the map, and players would, like, go around looking for the other objectives and the other items and, you know, the collectible stuff. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, okay, it did make sense because you didn't know what was going on. You're just running from objective to objective. Maybe there isn't enough ammo and then there isn't enough supply drops to come down because maybe, you know, you're eating through them or your team is. But I just think there is enough ammo out there and I don't think you're going to use as much ammo. So I'm just going to say this is crap, but I know there was a leak of a bigger one with even more, even more ammo in. So there might be mission types. Again, I mean, I suppose you could argue this. Viable on the right mission because if you've got a mission type where you don't have access to your stratagems as often uh you know as they would be or there's a modifier in play then maybe yeah coming down with a ton of ammo would make sense also you can reload your own um ammo with this as well uh, most people just think it's just there to give to other people but it's not obviously you can run up to other hell divers when you've got this equipped and give them ammo and you will heal hear them they will say last mag or whatever and then you know that oh they need ammo um but also yeah you can give it to yourself but i just think this is crap like i don't see a world in where you need this because there's a lot of ammo just on the map anyway um and yeah you've got resupply okay so moving on <laughs> we're gonna go to the grenade launcher this bad boy oh this is s tier this is actually s tier this is a bad weapon bad boy so with the thing with this right so these two you can use them together and it's so good so the grenade launcher kills everything pretty much you can again you can fire this underneath charges to blow them like to blow their belly away or whatever but here's the thing with this if you take it with the anti uh the ex expendable anti-tank this is your reliable bio titan charger tank killer this kills everything else and also the grenade launcher kills bug holes and kills bill uh, well kills automaton factories it also kills um illegal broadcast towers as well it's really good it's really good like if, you, if i see somebody with these two on my team i'm like yeah they know what they're doing Obviously, you can't carry them both at the same time, right? So if you were to pick up the 
East Rocket, you would throw the grenade launcher on the floor. But that's fine because you generally would just pick this up just to do what you need to do with it and back to the grenade launcher. Absolutely goated. Amazing against both automatons and terminids. Fantastic weapon. Just, just mega, mega powerful the grenade launcher is. So here's an interesting one. All right, the laser cannon. Now, this is... I, I feel like this should be better than it is. But there is a little bit of a spoiler here, guys. There is a thing called a quasar coming to the game, which is a like a really heavy energy weapon. It looks like it charges up a massive bolt of energy and fires it and does a ton of damage. Uh, this is from leaks that I've seen. It's not in the game at the moment. So this might be just sort of occupying that medium laser slot. Um, wh whereas what I was about to say is, you know what, actually, I want this to blow up big targets. As if it's got like a charge mechanic, like the longer you hit the target, then it's penetrating light armor medium armor heavy armor then it takes the target out that'd be cool and it'd weigh the risk up of like needing to fire this at the target and keep it on target for a while for it to be effective um of course it overheats and if it does you need to reload the heat sink but if you manage the temperature on it then you never need to reload um but it, it, it it's okay like it's better than these stratagems and i would prefer somebody take this over the flamethrower <laughs> but i yeah I, I don't think it's it's just not quite there yet but it does look amazing. When this is being used, it looks absolutely sick. And it sounds really good as well. And it is one of my favorite weapons. But I think the auto cannon is just better in every way. But yeah, it's okay, laser cannon. But uh, mm. okay, talking of... Uh, oh man, can I call this crap? I'm going to call... Oh, I can't. Okay, I can't call one of the mines crap. Because they basically do the same thing. So this is just the incendiary mines. It just burns enemies. It's uh, This does more damage. Uh, the anti-personnel. The burning stuff is fine. I mean, but again, you could do a thematic build, right? Flamethrower, incendiary mines, the incendiary grenade. You, know, you could just go crazy. Napalm, <laughs> airstrike. So I guess it's cool for that. But yeah, I, I would not. I would not take this uh, ever. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the guard dogs. Okay, I love these. I love these. So this is the um, it's the laser, basically. The guard dog laser. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's the one with the laser. I like this, right? I think this is... Um, Cool. So I, I don't think I'm going to say it's decent. I want to say it's really good, but it's not because there's better loadouts you can take um, if you're just looking to like maximize, you know, your kill potential, your value to the team and all of that. But this lets you do different things because what it will do is laser down. And again, this has got very high uptime because it's a laser. It will keep killing a lot of enemies that try and like literally mug you. So it's quite good to keep you protected from stalkers and hunters that you might not see. It will kill them, which is really, really good. Um, but it is at the cost of a support stratagem slot. It is a backpack. Are there other better backpacks? Yeah, shield generator, maybe. This, though, I, I do think it's pretty good. Like, I will roll this sometimes. The other downside to this is it will uh, kill your own team, and it will kill you as well, which can be quite frustrating sometimes, and it kills you really fast when it hits you. Um, but I do think, yeah, as, as, as an option for, like, you know, if you were taking maybe... I mean, I guess let's talk about primary weapons quickly. Like one of the uh, the anti-sniper primary weapon or the counter-sniper. Having this guard dog actually is pretty good because it will stop things getting close to you so you can react in time. Obviously, your primary weapon isn't good enough at taking out hordes of enemies at close range. So this can kind of fill that slot. Um, but yeah, I like taking it sometimes. It's just if I want to see lasers firing everywhere. And again, you could do a thematic laser build, right? Laser, well, you couldn't take the laser cannon because you... Oh, no, you can actually. It doesn't have a backpack. Yeah, so you could have laser cannon in this. And then, ooh. <laughs> Can you? No, actually. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. Anyway, whatever. It's it's okay, right? It's decent. It's decent. <laughs> I'll get really excited. Okay, this one. All right. Uh, I'm going to say this is the same. So this is the it, this is the guard dog with a machine gun, uh, with the liberator. Uh, it, this, okay. So the downside to this is it needs to reload. But the upside is it is really, really, really fast at killing lightly armored enemies. This will hose down those little bugs like ridiculously fast like, and it'll just kill them all it's really good for that um i probably would take this more against the bugs than i would against automatons whereas the laser rover i might just take that against everyone because it's just great um but i think it's decent actually i think it no i'm gonna put it not bad it can't no it, the laser cannon's better than this right uh i don't think it is you know actually i don't think it is i think this is not too bad we'll leave it there it's not too bad Okay, talking of things which are S-tier, like, stupid goated. This is the Arc Cannon. I can't remember what this is called. Actually, let me just Google what this one's called. <laughs> I can't call it the Arc Cannon. I know it's not called that. <laughs> What's it called? 
arc something, right? Arc, arc, arc. Throw it. Throw it. That's it. I knew it was something. Anyway, this is great. Um, so this doesn't run out of ammo. And this clears out groups of enemies that you would not believe. Light enemies, medium enemies. You can kill heavy enemies with it, but it does take quite a few shots. Never runs out of ammo, but it will kill your team. If your teammates have got the resistance armor on, then yeah, it won't kill them. But it's very unlikely they'll run that because it's kind of a crap bonus for anybody. Who, you know, you wouldn't just run that armor for the sake of it. You know what I mean? Um, you would run different armor with different bonuses on, like the scout armors or um, the ones that give you extra grenades or better stims and stuff like that. But still, this is goaded. This is like so much firepower is available here. It is close range, but so much firepower available. If you use this in conjunction with the shield backpack, you're like really good at clearing out waves of enemies. Yeah, you're not great against anything that's got heavy armor, really. You can kill them, but it takes way too many shots and it's super dangerous. But it's like a horde clearer. Really, really good. Um, I do think the grenade launch is better, though. But I think this is definitely better than these support weapons. So it has to go S tier. So it's it's great. It's so good, that weapon. It's, it, it's really, really good. Okay, shield backpack. I'm going to hate doing this because I've been used... Uh, oh. When I use this, it oh, oh, I wasn't a big fan of this because I feel like there's much more fun options available. Like you could take the guard dogs, right? I think they're just more fun as a backpack. This though gives you, um, it lets you play the game more, especially on harder difficulties. So you won't get killed instantly by a rocket devastator from across the map, killed instantly by a gun turret or a tank, you know, or a bio titan, or it's just the list goes on and on and on. This stops that. So it means you've got that extra moment of, uh-oh, I'm about to get hit by a rocket. Oh, God, it's hit me. It's knocked me down. My shields are gone. I'm nearly dead, but I'm still alive. I take a stim. I'm still in the fight, and off I go. You might then be able to kill that enemy straight away, kill more enemies. So I think this gives you a lot for what it is, and it has to be S tier. And it almost is a requirement on harder difficulties just because it does make the game a lot easier. If you don't take this, you will have a much harder time against those random insta-death mechanics, which are super super frustrating i have to say okay let's move on to the next thing this is the uh this is just the normal turret i think the machine gun turret again let me just google this uh i think yeah it's just the machine gun turret so the mission because these look similar but i know that's the gatling cannon the machine gun turret is crap i wouldn't take that because it's just crap what i would take though is the gatling turret this is much better um a higher rate of fire these essentially do the same job i think this one might have slightly better armor penetration but really they do the same job um I think they are not viable on the right mission because you can get value out of these just on every mission. They're really good on extraction, to be honest. Uh, th this one, ignore this one, but this one, the Gatling Cannon, can be quite good. Again, it can kill your own team, but a way of getting around that is if you put it on higher ground than what your team are fighting on, generally won't get any kills because people die from this just firing through them rather than firing down at them, so it can be quite powerful there. Um, but yeah, I think this is pretty good, actually. Um, and you know, I might put this in decent. You know, I'm going to put this in decent. I think this is decent, the Gatling Cannon. I think this is... It, it, uh, oh, can I? Because the auto cannon toy... Mm, 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 no, no spoilers, no spoilers. Mortar, go away. <laughs> right then, let's. this is going to get me flamed in the comments. So the mortar, well, 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 the old mortar. This is really, 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 really good on eradication. Um, however, <laughs> if you are getting swamped... <laughs> I'm choking to death just thinking about this. If you are getting swamped by enemies, this will kill you <laughs> and kill your team. I'm, I'm literally joking. However, initially, this was like, wow, this is like S tier. You need to take this on every mission. I, uh, no, it's too random. And I tell you what, I've got bad blood with this turret because the amount of terminated control tower missions, this thing prevented being completed because it kept shelling the goddamn silos drove me actually insane <laughs> so it's going in crap tier this thing it's the bane of my existence <laughs> okay what's this thing this is the um oh no i've got confused here oh no hang on a minute this is not the guard dog this is the back this is the uh oh no 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 what have i done here <laughs> okay hang on hang on this is the guard dog i was talking about this is the ballistic shield this is crap this is actually crap this is like the little the little shield you hold up it's just crap never use that it's the worst thing in the game <laughs> i can't believe okay you can see why i got them confused they do look very similar but yeah this is the guard dog you see the the icons the same 
So they, they indicate the guard dog like the drone. And this is clearly a shield. It is the, uh, yeah, the ballistic shield. It's it's horrible. It's actually horrible. It's funny if you want to use it, but it's just, it's horrible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> okay, this is goated. This is the auto cannon turret. Uh, I really like this. This has got to go up here. So this is the reason why the Gatling cannon is indecent. Uh, uh, the Gatling cannon turret, I should say, is decent. Because this is really good. Placed at the right position, this will annihilate the enemy. It's, it's really good at taking out heavily armoured enemies as well. Where you'd think the auto cannon wouldn't be that effective against them. It is. And it will slam them. It is so good. And also, this doesn't really get that many team kills either. I think it's just because it's not spraying bullets through your team. <laughs> but it's really good. And also, this will annihilate dropships. So if you've got uh, automaton dropships coming in, this thing will just kill all of the bots underneath before they even drop. And probably blow the dropship up. It puts that much fire into them. Really, really good sentry this is. I think this is my favourite one. Um, and, and, and it's not mission specific either. Because you can just drop... You can like drop this if you're attacking a big base. Or a big objective. And it will just rinse, rinse, rinse the enemy. It's so good. And it's really good on extraction as well. Um, okay. I've just realised that the images I loaded into this have not loaded in. <laughs> which was the uh, suit. <laughs> so... Um, let me just load that back in. Okay, uh, the walker has been loaded in. So we're going to do the walker now because I've just it's it's fresh in my mind. So this is the uh, machine gun and the missile variant of the exosuit. We know there's more variants coming. We know there's an auto cannon variant coming. But this is I like I am having a debate forever about this whether it's viable on the right mission or actually decent and you can take this on every mission because what it's really strong at. No, no. This is my reasoning. I'm keeping it on viable on the right mission. Because against bots, it's not great, right? But against Terminids, it's great. So, I guess viable against the right enemy is a better way to look at it. On eradication missions, I always take a mech. I really enjoy a mech on those missions. I very rarely take them on other missions. But they're very good at extraction. So, they're basically... The way to think of them is they're a, a dual-purpose mobile turret. But what I don't like about them is they're bugged. Like, you will kill yourself quite a few times with the mech. When you're turning and you fire a rocket, it generally hits the inside hitbox of your mech and blows it up and kills you, which doesn't feel great. And you will do it. Even though you know it's going to happen, you'll do it because of how frantic the fights are. So I think for me, this is not... Uh, I can't say... I think it's just a viable on the right mission kind of thing. But it is really powerful, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, you can just wipe out Bile Titans... Wipe out heavily armoured units with it by just launching missiles into them. You can hose down all every other unit with the machine gun, which does have quite a bit of ammunition as well. It's really good, um, but I think it's more viable on the right against the right enemy and at the right point in the mission or on the right mission. I think that's what I'm going to say about that. Okay, next up is the missile turret. So this thing is the... Um, what's it called, this thing? It's called the Rocket Sentry, the AMLS four times a rocket it's th this is all right this is this can be okay again against drop ships actually uh, and heavily armored enemies but i don't know whether i would prioritize this over the auto cannon i don't want to say it's crap I, I, uh, I think the gatling is probably better maybe but you see like the thing is if you're on a defensive mission nothing really stops you just taking loads of turrets as well you can do that obviously you know you've got you're going to be aware of where you place the turrets down and if they get destroyed or they run out of ammo or the timer runs up on them yeah you can be left open a little bit but i, I think i'm going to leave this as not too bad just because it's better than these turrets that's at least going to be my reasoning there so kind of crap so this one is the ems um turret so this is the one that stuns stuff now i prefer this oh, way over the uh mortar sentry and i reckon this could be one of those well i think this is one of those misunderstood sentries at the moment again i've not seen much of this in the game i don't even use this myself but it's got the same effect as the orbital ems strike and the stun grenade so in theory this could be quite good you know this is going off stunning enemies that's pretty good and of course it's not going to kill you as well which is another bonus or at least it's not going to instantly kill you anyway <laughs> hmm, so i'm gonna leave it at that yeah and these are just the mission uh stratagems that everyone gets obviously if you had to you know, these, <laughs> let's just put them in anyway. Reinforcements, obviously goated. SOS when it works is goated. And supply, yeah, that's goated. <laughs> I think I'm happy with this, actually. I think I'm happy with this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. These are what I think are the best stratagems in the game at the moment. Obviously, just play what the hell you like. It's Helldivers. But when it comes down to just raw power and effectiveness, I think this looks like a pretty good list. There are some things we could change around. 
Like, I'm looking at this here thinking Cluster Bomb's too too low, really. I think Cluster Bomb's really good. But is it better than that? Mm, uh, Napalm as well. Cluster Bomb might be better than Napalm. Anyway, I'm out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.